Hello, welcome back to Weekly Wildlife Wisdom. As always, I am your host, Zero Yeti. Let's go ahead and get into it with the first animal of the week being the raccoon dog. Also known as the Mango the Tanuki or the Naguri, it is a small canid species, roughly around 2.5 feet long, weighing around 15 pounds, and is the only extant species of the genus Nicturides. And despite its name, its close living relatives are foxes and not North American raccoons. Raccoon dogs are native to Eastern Asia, ranging from Eastern Russia to Japan and down to Northern India. They were introduced to Europe and now have become quite abundant throughout Estonia, Finland, Latvia, Lithuania, Bulgaria, Serbia, France, Romania, Slovakia, Switzerland, Austria, Belarus, Poland, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Moldova, Northern Macedonia, Romania, Ukraine, Germany, Norway, Denmark, and Sweden. Raccoon dogs live throughout forests, farmlands, and urban areas, often found near water. They prefer moist meadows, shores of rivers and lakes, and other habitats with abundant undergrowth. Here they feed on a variety of food items, such as insects, small mammals, amphibians, birds, fish, reptiles, moss, carrion, fruits, nuts, and berries. The raccoon dogs themselves are hunted by wolves, foxes, badgers, and birds of prey, including eagles and owls. Raccoon dogs are social animals, living and hunting in small family groups of between 2 and 12 individuals. They have several traits and behaviors that are unique amongst canines, with raccoon dogs along with gray foxes being the only arboreal canines. Raccoon dogs are further known as the only canids known to hibernate, although they do so sparingly, only hibernating during particularly harsh winters. They also do not bark, instead uttering a growl, followed by long, drawn-out, melancholy, melancholy whines and whistles. Next up is the Marina Fruit Dove, also known as the Mewi Mewi in the Carolinian language, the Tot Tot in Guam, or the Paloman Tot Tot in northern Marinas Islands. It is a small, up to 10 inch long, green fruit dove, native and endemic to Guam and the northern Marinas Islands, and throughout the Pacific. It has a red forehead, a grayish head, back and breast, and yellow belly patch along the undertail coverts. It is the official bird of the Northern Marias Islands, and in the wild they can be found living and nesting throughout coastal rainforests, mountain cloud forests, and mangrove swamps, feeding on fruit, leaves, flowers, and seeds of a variety of plant species. Peak breeding season occurs from April to August, with nesting generally occurring year-round. Female lays a single white egg, and the chick and egg are tended by both, tend to by both parents. The marina fruit dove faces the threat of extinction due to both habitat loss and the accidental introduction of the brown tree snake to Guam during World War II. The snakes have decimated the native bird population on the island, which were unaccustomed to predators. Because of this, fruit doves have been extinct in Guam since eight, 1984 and highly endangered on other islands in its range. Because of this, several zoos have started trying to bring them back uh, from the brink of extinction, with the St. Louis Zoo having one of the most successful captive breeding programs throughout the world. Next animal on the list is the Golden Snub-Nosed Monkey, also called the Sichuan Golden Hair Monkey and the Sichuan Snub-Nosed Monkey. It is an old world monkey in the subfamily Colobidae, named after the Colobus Monkey, their close relative. They are the most so the Sichuan snub-nosed monkey is the most cold-tolerant species of primate on Earth, aside from humans, and are endemic to temperate mountain forests of central and southwest China from elevations between 4,900 and 11, to 11,200 feet. Here they eat a variety of foods such as lichens, young leaves, fruits, seeds, buds, mature leaves, herbs, bark, and flowers, depending on the season. The snub-nosed monkey is in turn preyed upon by doles, wolves, leopards, Asian golden cats, golden eagles, and northern goshawks. The, northern, the golden snub-nosed monkey is found in groups ranging from size from between 5 and 10 individuals to bands of upwards of 600. The social organization of the species can be quite complex, with 1 male units, or OMUs, are the basic social unit within groups of golden snub-nosed monkeys, with many of the OMUs forming bigger groups. Uh, these multi-tiered societies consist of several OMUs that include one adult male plus a number of adult females and their offspring. Society's home range sizes vary seasonally depending on the availability and distribution of food. The total covered area by a seasonal home range is surprisingly large for a species of primate. 
uh, with one of the largest home ranges being found, covered 25 square miles. Due to the abundance of predators, limited range, and human encroachment, the golden snow-nosed monkey is considered an endangered species, with only between 8,000 and 15,000 golden snow-nosed monkeys remaining in the wild. Next up is the rosette spoonbill, which is a roughly three foot tall, four pound gregarious wading bird of the ibis and spoonbill family, Thristi ornithidae. It is a resident breeder in South America, mostly east of the Andes and the coastal regions of the Caribbean, Central America, Mexico, the Gulf Coast of the United States, and on the Atlantic coast from Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge in Florida to at least as far north as South Carolina's Myrtle Beach. It prefers shallow, fresh, or coastal waters where it can feed by swinging its bill side to side as it steadily walks through the water, often in groups. The spoonbill shape of the bill allows it to sift easily through mud, allowing it to catch crustaceans, aquatic insects, amphibians, and small fish that are often ignored by larger wading birds. The spoonbills themselves fall prey to eagles, sharks, crocodilians, vultures, large snakes, coyotes, and fire ants. These birds nest in shrubs and mangrove trees, uh, with females laying between three to five eggs at the same time. Uh, their eggs are generally whitish with brown marks on them. The incubation takes between 22 and 24 days, with the young spoonbills having white feathered hair with a pale pink plumage. The bill is also either yellowish or pinkish in immature birds. For adults, when they reach the breeding age, the green buff alongside their heads becomes visible. During the 19th century, the feathers of these birds were so highly sought after to make ornate fans and hats that in 1930 only 40 breeding pairs were found. However, thanks to conservation efforts and the decline of the hat industry, feather hat industry specifically, the rosette spoonbill is no longer an endangered species with around 120,000 individuals in the wild today. Next up is the fire eel, which is a species of three foot long freshwater spiny eel native throughout Indonesia, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Pakistan, Burma, Thailand, Malaysia, Borneo, and Sumatra. Here they inhabit rivers, swamps, and floodplains, preferring slow moving water with a thick muddy bottom in which they can burrow. They often spend large portions of their time buried in the riverbed, eating insects, worms, plant roots, small fish, and crustaceans, often leaving only their snout visible. The fire eel is not a true eel, but an extremely elongated fish with a distinctive pointed snout and underslung mouth. Their row of dorsal spines, while not venomous, do produce a slime that is toxic to some predators. The fire eel's base coloring is dark brown and gray, with the belly uh, generally being a lighter shade of the same color. Several bright lateral red lines and stripes along with spots mark the body and a variety of intensity depending on the age and condition of the individual. Usually the markings are yellow or amber in juvenile fish and then change to their deep red fire color in older individuals. Females are generally typically larger than males and are egg scatterers, typically laying between 700 and 1,000 eggs. Uh, they are a popular fish in both commercial fishing industry and the aquarium trade where they can live up to 10 years in captivity. Next up is the tuxedo urchin, which is a three inch diameter soft urchin native to reefs throughout India and the Pacific Ocean. Throughout the Indian and Pacific Oceans. There are additionally two subspecies being the blue tuxedo urchin and the red tuxedo urchin. Uh, the tuxedo urchins are considered by marine biologists to be a keystone species of tropical areas as they promote the development of reef building corals via the intense grazing pressure they exert on benthic algae. They get their name due to their iconic appearance, sporting a broad, velvety, dark bluish or reddish bands, depending on the subspecies, uh, that are between rows of short spines. Due to their fairly small size, the tuxedo urchin avoids predation by adopting a nocturnal lifestyle, spending its days hiding amongst rocks, under plants, or buried in the sand, or emerging at night to graze on algae present in or near its home. One of the most interesting behaviors of the tuxedo urchin is their ability to camouflage themselves by picking up small items such as rocks, shells, and even corals, and attach them to their spines on their backs. The tuxedo urchins then carry themselves around to disguise themselves. 
The tuxedo urchin can live to 10 years, maturing from their larval stage at roughly 2 years of age. And our extinct animal of the week is Varanus priscus, or more famously known as Megalania. It is an extinct species of giant monitor lizard, uh, part of the megafaunal assemblage that inhabited southern Australia during the Pleistocene. At up to 23 feet in length and over 4,000 pounds in weight, it is considered to be the largest terrestrial lizard known to have ever existed. Its skull was remarkably robust, even compared to other monitor lizards, and may have sported a distinctive crest. Megalania roamed throughout the ecosystems of Pleistocene Australia, which were very different to the rest of the world, thanks mostly to the continent's isolation. While the rest of the continents were dominated by elephants, ungulates, bears, and big cats, Australia was home to some truly bizarre creatures. Such as the large flightless duck relatives, Guinea Ornus and Buckluck Ornus, giant wombats such as Diprotodon and Fascolonus, the giant club tailed tortoise Miolania, and the huge extinct kangaroo Procroptodon, all of which would have been excellent prey for a large meat eating reptile like Varanus priscus. However, there was also competition for the position of apex predator by other predators, including the terrestrial crocodile Fukana, uh, and the, which may have rivaled Varanus priscus in size, and the marsupial lion Thylacoleo. Due to, the, due to this competition, it is thought that Megalania may have inhabited a role of super scavenger, similar to some of the large bears in other continents, feeding primarily by scaring off predators from their kills. Although direct evidence is lacking, Varanus priscus is generally thought to have been able to use venom from its glands in its lower jaw, making it the largest venomous animal ever to exist. This venom gland idea is based off of studies of related monitor species such as Komodo dragons. And like with Komodo dragons, the venom would have been would have enabled Varanus priscus to easily take down even the largest prey items with only a few bites. Living between 2 million years ago and 23,000 years ago, Megalania would have coexisted with the earlier Aboriginal people. As evidenced by distinctive cave and rock art depicting guanas of truly unusual size. As always, take care to my guys, gals, non binary pals.